Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Harding. Um, I'm here with Kamara, Khalid, and Ben, and I'm here to introduce our um, final project. We decided to do financial efficiency for a restaurant chain. Our, um, their problem was that um, their accounting and financial was not keeping their, their employee information current and the payroll check processing was very slow. Um, so our goals were to expedite the payroll process and to make the process faster and also increase their cash flow. Our second goal um, is to provide the restaurant chain with a new strategy for payroll and processing that would lead to an improved process system. This is our functional decomposition diagram. Um, we took a more financial approach to this diagram because um, our client's main problem was to speed up the payroll system. The functional decomposition diagram is vital to our solution because it helps to break down the complexity by displaying the processes and their sub-processes. This allows for each part to be analyzed independently. This also helps your business analysts to both validate and verify the results and to use them to solve other tasks. Um, this is the organizational chart. Um, in our organizational chart, um, we have the BPM organizer at the very top and then it trickles down all the way down to like the process modeler. modeler. This is helpful in our solution because um, it really shows where um, people need to report and what their responsibilities are when doing the BPM. Um, the organizational chart is also important because it defines the responsibility of everyone in the company and externally. Hello, my name is Ben Locker and I'll be talking about the functional relationship diagram. A functional relationship diagram is an essential visual tool used to show the constraints that a company will take in order to achieve that goal with greater throughput. It provides focus and clarity on how companies should go forth in resolving a problem. It's a roadmap for success. We started with our concept and put what tasks needed to be achieved in order to meet our resolution. Instead of creating new tasks, we simply moved our tasks over from the functional decomposition diagram and assessed them properly. This gave more clarity as we were already familiar with our FDD. Since increasing throughput is what we are attempting to achieve, showing the relationship between each task in proper order is pivotal. It provides focus, clarity, and relieves stress. And now let's discuss the functional relationship diagram that we made. We started with our concept and acknowledged that if we are to begin, you must have telecommunications, accrual booking, corporate accounting, and an internal audit. And in order to have those, we must have fixed assets. These would be accountants, telephones, etc. In order to have these assets, we must have fixed asset maintenance, project maintenance, project setup, IT financials, and a financial structure maintenance. In order to have those, we must have IT finance and a proper finance system. Once we have these, we can achieve finance rewards and restaurant P&L management. This all leads to our goal of achieving compensation and increased cash flow while gaining more fluent throughput. Next, we have our process flow. Our, in our process flow, we wanted to provide a way to track what events must take place in the process, how it has to be completed, and by who. This provides a rationale to our process. The purpose of this model is to be able to track the process and know exactly what has to happen in order for it to be completed. One of our biggest problems with the original system was it was too slow and not up to date. With this new model, we will be able to improve the time it takes to process each payroll cycle by having a clear process of what has to happen and clear questions that have to be answered to know what the next step will be. 
This will ensure we do not continue going in a loop like in our old system and delaying the pay for the employees. Another story that so as we can see on the first user story, the action step in this case involved the verification of personal information on the position as an employee. In the conversation section, the information entered was verified to ensure that the employee provided the correct information. Second user story. The action step involved the verification that all the employee reported. The employees were informed of the requirement and every individual in the company made aware of the policy. The acceptance criteria involved the approval that all employees had reported. If accepted, the review process was started. On the third user story, the statement of value was examined in the position of the employee. During the process, the value of the session was examined to ensure the time paid off. This ensured that the employee was happy with his job. And final user story, the statement of value was the payment processor since the holder of the position was required to accept the data submitted. The payment processor was required to ensure that all the data submitted was correct. If the data was approved as correct, the payment was processed and produced. So as we can see on the first user story, the action step in this case involved the verification of personal information on the position as an employee. In the conversation section, the information entered was verified to ensure that the employee provided the correct information. Second user story. The action step involved the verification that all the employee reported. The employees were informed of the requirement and every individual in the company made aware of the policy. The acceptance criteria involved the approval that all employee had reported. If accepted, the review process was started. On the third user story, the statement of value was examined in the position of the employee. During the process, the value of the session was examined to ensure the time paid off. This ensured that the employee was happy with his job. And final user story, the statement of value was the payment processor since the holder of the position was required to accept the data submitted. The payment processor was required to ensure that all the data submitted was correct. If the data was approved as correct, the payment was processed and produced. So as we can see on the first user story, the action step in this case involved. Now that we have created um, all of the diagrams we needed for our project, we had to develop a plan to implement this new system. So we have created a 30, 60, 90 day plan. This will be our short term plan for now. It involves what we need to do before we can fully implement the new system to our organization, along with metrics on improvements we want to see from this new system. This will help us develop a plan to finish the implementation process on time. First, we have a few metrics. We have created these metrics to help us determine if we are on track with our business goals. These will help us evaluate the system to see if we accomplished our goals so we can develop improvement strategies for the future to strengthen this part of the business. These metrics include decreasing costs by 15% since we are expediting this, decreasing the time each payroll cycle is in the process by half, and then finally increasing accuracy of data by 6%.
Next, we have our short-term implementation process. It's the 30, 60, 90 day plan. In the first 30 days, we will begin our research for the new payroll system. This includes evaluating our current processing system and meeting with current employees to discover how the system can be improved and what part of the process is least efficient for the company. We will also be creating a communication plan on how we will let employees know of this new system and what updates they should look for. Within the first 60 days, we will develop a structure for this new payroll system for the organization. We will begin to implement our communication plan with employees to prepare them for the change. This will include handing out manuals and newsletters with information. We will also begin training employees directly involved with the payroll system on how it will function and what process they will need to follow. Within the 90 days, we will look to get approval from IT for the new system and have them check for security protocols we should follow. We will also test the payroll system to determine if our goals, improving time and decreasing errors, was met. We will then implement the new system at the end of the 90 days, we will evaluate the new system to ensure it is working properly with the organization and if we need to discuss improvement strategies for the future. Our long-term plan will involve constantly checking the system and identifying areas of improvement every year. In conclusion, we evaluated the current payroll process in order to develop goals and a plan to improve the business process to increase efficiency. We created a process model to decrease errors and time spent processing one cycle of payment to save the company money and make the process easier for the employees. We created a clear strategy to improve and implement this new system. As a result, our company will be running smoothly with less errors and more efficiently with our newest system that is more user friendly. Thank you for listening to our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us.